Trick. All right, let's cross live now to Ranjit Brar, a prominent member of the British Communist Party, joining us live from London. Good to have you on with us. Uh, first of all, what do you think of the election? A big win for the Workers' Party leader, George Galloway, a big loss for the Conservatives and Labour parties. What's your opinion on those results? Thanks so much for having me. Uh, uh, I'm very happy with the result. I am one of the millions who is celebrating, and it really is millions upon millions. You know, the attitude of our political establishment towards democracy is a bit like the Chinese emperor who said that he loved the dragon and he painted his whole palace, you know, with glorious pictures of the dragon. But when the dragon actually showed up, he took fright and had his soldiers kill it. And this is very much Rishi, Rishi Sunak's attitude towards the democracy. They, they say they love democracy, but of course, it's a, it's a rigged political system in which uh, the power of our press and the power of the two main parties really have it stitched up. And we tend to vote for one and then the other and have no real say over the running of our country, uh, our international policy, our local policy, our local affairs. George Galloway has driven a coach and horses through that cosy consensus. And in particular, of course, it refers to the warmongering policy and the genocide that is going on with the full sponsorship of Anglo-American imperialism that has angered many uh, in the British working class and has particular resonance, of course, um, for you know, the, the, the population of Rochdale, many of whom are from a Muslim Pakistani background. But it goes well beyond that. It goes well beyond that because there are many other existential crises that the British people are facing, most notably a, a deepening poverty. And Rochdale has one of the highest, you know, group of poverty indices with, you know, as many as 12 out of a classroom of 30 children in any one of Rochdale's classes will be living in poverty and possibly going to school hungry. Yeah, the, the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was quick to denounce Galloway's victory as a threat to democracy. I'm just curious as to how would that be a threat if people voted for the candidate they wanted? Isn't that how democracy works? Well, we know very well that's not really how democracy works in our country. That's the, that's the pretense, uh, which is why the U.S., you know, when it goes around the world, feels very entitled to destabilize uh, governments and throw out democratically elected leaders, it, it doesn't like them. You know, uh, it's, it, it, there's so many examples. One doesn't know where to begin, but it, obviously the, the the appointment of Jan Guaido, you know, uh, uh, is one that, um, you know, uh, uh, comes to mind. And equally, the Maidan events of 2014, when they, you know, overthrew the, the legitimately democratically elected leader of Ukraine to wage war on Russia, of course. So, you know, at home, it's the same thing. We are allowed certain opinions as long as they fall within the spectrum of allowable opinion, which is very clearly a so-called Overton window of what is allowed belief. If you step outside that, if you denounce their wars, because their wars, of course, of Anglo-American imperialism, of our big business class, are where the majority of the capital of the income of our country come from, and you're not allowed to challenge them. It was for that reason that all of the, the, the attacks upon the former Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, for his alleged anti-Semitism sprang. They didn't want any Labour leader or any politician to challenge the sanctity of their, their rights to export capital, to, to loot the world and their military escapades to back that. And it's this that they really fear about George Galloway, as well as his ability to raise the, the, the political will, if you like, of a British working people who essentially are, are disengaged from politics, are disillusioned uh, with their politicians after a whole series of events, you know, from austerity in 2008, through Brexit, through COVID, uh, through crisis and war, through the, a massive rampant inflationary and energy crisis, which is really driving down the expectations, living standards and life expectations of the entire working population. Is this a bigger nationwide trend that we're seeing both main UK parties losing support? It may well be. I mean, it's Suella Braveman's comments around the Gaza marches as being hate marches. Uh, Rishi Sunak has taken up that theme last night. Uh, um, um, are really uh, uh, part of the problem. They don't like people expressing their will. They don't like the very firm movement that has sprung up opposing their imperialism. And there is a far deeper well of discontent, both with Labour and with Tory. There's a huge you know, swings, apparently, in the election polls towards the Labour Party. But what you see underlying that is actually there's a decrease in engagement with politics. There's a deep, there's a, the lowest ever records 
uh, of trust or, or security or, or positive feelings towards our political leaders and our political system. And what I think you're going to find is that there will be large numbers of people now who are likely to stand independent candidates. Some of those will be, you know, George has, has announced his um, uh, desire to stand up to 60 candidates in the election. But I think we'll find a lot already, a lot particularly of those disenfranchised working class, um, pro-Palestinian communities up and down the country are looking to field their own candidates. And what you can see is, you know, this is a section of the population who are formerly very loyal to Labour. Rochdale was one of those candidacies where you could have stuck a Labour rosette on a donkey and expected it to romp to victory, you know, for any time in the last, you know, basically since the Second World War. That is no longer the case. That loyalty to Labour is collapsing, and that gives rise to electoral opportunities. It also gives rise to um, the opportunity to organise working people to expect a, a, a different fundamental order of society. To say that actually our politics, our economics should serve working people. We don't want to be involved in these wars. We don't want to constantly drive to war with Russia, with China, with our neighbours. Again, you know, have policies which crush the working people of Britain in favour of a wealthy elite. These are rising sentiments in our country. And no matter how much Rishi Sunak rails against this as being the politics of division, the reality is that it's our government who are the extremists and the loyal Labour opposition, the Labour party of imperialism, are very much a part of that system. It's the they who are facing a crisis. And it's not a policy of division. Actually, this is the politics of mm. the unity of the working people coming together, seeing through the lies, through the system, and choosing to vote with their feet. And in this case, to vote using the, the limited electoral means available to express their will in Britain's political system. Is it rare to see a foreign policy stance dominating a parliamentary election campaign? Or is the war in Gaza such an important issue right now in the UK? I think it's not rare. In, in a sense, Britain is a country, uh, you know, that used to have an empire upon the world, upon which the, the sun never set. Um, it was a huge empire and a huge amount of capital it's looted from the world. And therefore, really, foreign policy issues are constantly playing a part in the domestic life of Britain. There isn't really such a thing as the foreign policy. Britain still stands with America at the heart of most wars, most destabilization, the financial investment in all other countries. So we dominate politics, our, our ruling class dominate the politics around the world precisely for that reason. And as a result of it being an imperialist country, there's a, a, we have a multicultural society in which we are, our ruling class constantly play a racist anti-immigrant card. So all of these factors are constantly in the electoral play. What's unusual is, um, you know, with the power of the, of the press in our country acting really uh, in concert, uh, in hand in glove with Labour and the Tory party, they expect to be able to dominate the agenda and really have, have, have the political opinion, political voice and final word on, on what is going to happen. So what is unusual is that we've managed to puncture this two-party duopoly, just as they have Democrat and Republican in, in the United States. Okay. We very much have a Labour Party duopoly here, and puncturing that has been a, a very unusual event. But it's not unusual for okay. you know, anti-war sentiment, sentiment and anti-imperialist sentiment to actually be firmly expressed in Britain. All right, we'll leave it there. Ranjit Barar, British Communist Party member, joining us from London. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.